Um, uh, other elements connecting different levels, such as some staircases, uh, connecting also the bridge down from the uh, bridge down to the to the uh, the walkways along the the water. In the uh, January, I guess, more or less. This is the train station at the back there. This is actually a sketch from the uh, from a, an earlier stage where we were trying to look at how we could develop the waterfront. So that was basically it was just a stone filling uh, on the, uh, along the, the railway tracks, so it was not accessible at all. This area. <coughs> Ooh. And there's places like this along this walkway, just lowering the deck and making it uh, possibility, making it possible for to uh, to dock with small boats along, and then have these places with these small shelters and, and be long benches along them. Yeah.
I would like to tell you a little bit about this project. It's, uh, it's a project I worked with with Martin Forsby uh, a few years back, and it's a very, very <coughs> I'm very happy about this project because it maybe it's because it's a, it's um, it's the most public thing you can ever, you can do as an architect. I think to make a, a, a bus station, it's a bus stop. It's a, actually uh, um, as an idea, it's very simple. It's a 100 meters, exactly 100 meter long roof on uh, steel <coughs> pillars, um, couples of steel pillars, uh, 11 meters between each couple, uh, at um, uh, re repeating a pattern, carrying um, a steel frame that is, has wooden fillings and, and cladding with the uh, oak tree. Um, <coughs> there's different pavilions or small buildings under this roof. Uh, there is um, uh, a drinking fountain, as you see, also a small place to drink. It uh, has a small, the only building under it is a small cafe. Uh, the rest is uh, just these shelters that has, uh, have own steel frames and, and, and glazed on the inside to protect people waiting for the buses. And it was quite... Mm, uh, strange because uh, we one of them is actually like a bus, so you can practice um, as you wait for the bus. Um, practice, take the bus. Uh, the plan, the, the pavilions is that you see on this picture, they are the ones that you see, the darker, <coughs> the darker ones that you see along the edges of this long rectangular figure, and these are the six. But do you see the the six buses do that docks uh, on either side of the the long roof there on the drawing. So it's uh, very much in, um, it's, this is um, a drumming again that we worked with uh, a lot. And it's, um, it's like a very large, we, uh, I think uh, I like to call it a, a big a piece of uh, furniture, a public furniture piece uh, that has this um, uh, ability uh, because it's so spacious or open and it's always open for, for anyone to use, except the, the little cafe, that, that you can always walk around in, uh, in different directions, crossing it and, and diagonally and, 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 and just hang around, basically, in this building, which I like very much that you create places in a, in a town that has this, um, is accessible to anyone at any time of the day and night. This is, a, this is again, very much a building kit. It's a, like... All these pieces, this is uh, from the working drawings, all these pieces that we um, described and communicate here to the, the peep, to steel workers. So here you see the, the, the steel frame, the couples of, of uh, black steel, uh, steel and then detailing from, from the, these um, different uh, pavilions, small, small buildings under the roof there. This drink cup. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> oh, do I give it mm. the papier? Yeah, that might be true. Now we would like to. Um, well, first I would like to tell you a little bit about this. This is a this is a, a wooden uh, structure, um, sort of a pavilion that is uh, made by the first year students uh, at the university where I teach, the NTNU in Trondheim. Uh, we have a tradition, and we are uh, supported by the wood industry in Norway, that, that we uh, uh, build a large building as the first thing the students do. 
uh, coming to the, to the university to study architecture. That's a, a period of three weeks of planning and about two or three weeks of building. And all the 70 or 75 new students would build, uh, would plan a part of this pavilion and, and actually build it. Uh, this is one part of a, this is one of the part of a, it's a long uh, rectangular um, plateau or platform in, in, on a slope next to the, the main building of the university. The, where, um, whereas then in this case I was responsible for making the sort of master plan or the, the plan for the pavilion and then the students developing each part uh, and then it's becoming a, uh, a place for to, to, to be used for the for the for people and especially children and especially kindergartens come very often to use it. Um, after this, I'm going to show just a few. There's a few images of some other um, projects I've done during the, the last ten years or so, and uh, I think I would like to try to just. Uh, show the images with some uh, some music from Peer. Uh, this is there is this picture, and there is uh, one more of the pavilion that the students made. This is this is the other end of the pavilion. Um, each part of the pavilion is programmed for the. Um, for, for the, the group that is working with a certain area, such as uh, the part that you see to the right in this picture, is, um, should, uh, was to contain a large uh, area for, to be painted on by some uh, students from the Art Academy, but also um, a possibility to, to, to come up to the upper platform from the, from the level below. So behind that screen, on the, one of the... One of the um, the pieces of that screen can be opened and, and you, there's actually a ramp, a very narrow ramp behind it, so you, you, it takes you up the, the, to, the, to the level at the top.
the project you saw um, after the pavilion with the children has was then it was a summer house on the west coast of Sweden first, and then was it an aquarium project in Göteborg, Sweden. Uh, there was the restaurant, a restaurant, a large restaurant in a uh, park in Sweden, uh, the sketch with all the tables and small things. Uh, there was an art pavilion for a first prize in the competition uh, in Moss in Norway uh, called Momentum. There was a development of the harbor of Larvik in Norway. There was uh, uh, my entry for the extension of the uh, library, uh, the Stockholm Library, Asplund's Library. You probably recognize the round, uh, the building next to it uh, there. And then um, there was a row house uh, that was built as a mock-up, as a model. Uh, it was the first person in the Swedish competition. And, and then this is called a two-level house. It's a sort of an idea, an idea of a villa that has this very solid concrete uh, block at the bottom and a wooden structure on top with bedrooms um, facing a lake uh, with a glass wall all the way in this very long long room with a sort of a structure on the outside uh, for plants. Uh, per, would you like to tell us about the, the, what yes. we've heard? The music. We have heard music by, uh, as Fredrik mentioned, the, the Brazilian composer Hector Villalobos. And uh, the Cuban, uh, no, the Japanese composer Yokohiro Yoko, <laughs> and um, the Cuban composer uh, um, Leo Brauer, and uh, the Argentinian composer Astor Piazzolla. Yeah, that, that was that was uh, three pieces by Brauer in the yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Three, four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two, Villa Lobos, one, Piazzolla, and yeah. Okay. Thank you for the music. <laughs> <laughs>
difficult concrete situation as opposed to a pretty landscaped or countryside situation? Yeah, well, yeah, it's something I think about. Um, well, it's, uh, it's more or less, I think for me it's just become like that. that I, I've been working mostly with small projects, you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, but we, uh, maybe you, you noticed the, the, uh, the steel tower I showed in this uh, urban junction, but it's still quite a small town. I mean, it d depends on what you compare with. I mean, I've been, um, uh, for me having, um, I mean, um, uh, when, when I went to China a few years ago to make, have a lecture and, and a workshop at the Nanjing University and, and seeing the, 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 the development of the, the pace, I mean the, the tempo of the urbanize, how they urbanize in, in China is, is really, uh, of course, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very different thing. So it's just, um, but I, I would say that um, uh, with, with this, I mean, we have this very, very good tradition for, and we, we were interested in trying to renew the tradition of wood, but of course, I mean, it's if I were, were building an apartment block in central Madrid, I would not probably use wood at all. But it's, yeah, or I might in some parts, of course. Hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I fully understood. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, as a, um, there might be many students or people who want to build their own house in the future. Um, your client on the first project, how do they respond to um, maybe mistakes you've made first in design? Before. How do your clients in the first project cope with uh, poor decisions you might have made? With the decisions? Yeah. In design? Yeah. Any mistakes? Uh, <laughs> wow. Fantastic. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I, I have to say it's perfect. It's very, very good. Uh, it's wonderful to use it. Um, uh, it's uh, <laughs> this this very small building. I mean, it's uh, it's 15, 40, 49 square meters net floor area in this building, and people are amazed when they come there because when you open the door, you come into this very, very long room, which was actually inspired by uh, some um, the place I was in Portugal. Uh, a corridor, which is a very funny word, in a, in a monastery in, in Portugal, that there is a sort of a very, very long, and it's quite high, the space on the one side. So it's, uh, I think it's a very interesting way to organize a building. It's, it's long, high space, and that has sides, side ordered spaces to it. But of course, it's a choice that there is no bedrooms in this building. It's very, you know, peop some people might come there if they would want to buy it and said, they would stop, you know, they wouldn't even enter if they saw there's no bedrooms, you know? But it's like, it's a, it's a choice that, there's a lot of, there's stacks of mattresses along the wall and you can pick one and sleep wherever you like. I often sleep outside under the roof there. Um, I don't know, it's, I think it's very interesting to try to, uh, I think we, <coughs> as architects, we can make maybe a much, much, um, uh, let's say, um, we, we, can, we can put a, maybe a lot of, I mean, the art is really to try to make a lot of very, very good places in the building without, and, and still not um, making it, uh, let me give you the feeling that this, you know, it's, it's very claustrophobic and small, uh, the steel, but, but it is small in a way, but still it has, has architectural experience in it that is, is, is um, is that that belongs to a larger building. I think that's very interesting. So, um, well, I mean, it's a, it's a building for us and, and my family. It's like uh, we, have, we, we have to go across the fjord on the ferry. Uh, they serve good coffee and it's a very nice trip. 
20 minutes on the boat. And when, uh, but it's, uh, less, it's less than an hour from where we live in the, in the center of Trondheim. So the, the, it's very, it's a, it's a place we use a lot. Hmm. Yeah? Don? Yeah, I've got one. Oh. I'm a cheap, cheap like because um, the, the thing, that, a word that kept popping up when we had the concrete poetry uh, mm. project yeah, yeah. is um, there's one that's basic and that one's primitive. Yeah. And I think that was um, very accurate in terms of your work because there's a tremendous elegance there, a minimalism. Um, obviously, much of it has to do with timber and, and so on, but, but the um, elements that you used timber for was actually that scooping out that when there was a place for a bed or a place for a seat, a sofa, um, mm. you would made up like a little cave. Mm. When I say cave, I mean cave. Like a shallow. Yeah, a shallow cave is cave. perfect. So, um, and, and also a bit later you, you carried on, which I think might answer your question a little bit about an urban context, but I, I think a lot of the work became so sophisticated that it translated itself much more into that sort of Barcelona division mm. or a museum poetic touch, the way you used timber as a way of, it was a kind of an anonymous material. Did you, did you mean the bus stop now? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it could have been stone, it could have been concrete, yeah. it could have been another um, synthetic material. But I think the way you used it was, um, was in a very plastic way hmm. and ge uh, geometric. And yeah. But I, I think the work did have your own, it had your own language. I'm oh, sorry, I finished now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you. It's it's nice of you to say. It. Um, it's a. I mean, I'm, I've always been very interested in try. You know how uh, of different ways to express oneself. And, and personally, I find very much. You know, I could also call it keywords. You know, like I work like this very very much when I work with with design designing. It's like putting the keywords become very very uh, important in the process, and there there you could. Sometimes there might be poems, sometimes it's just keywords, but it's really trying. Um, <coughs> I mean, the, the cave, um, it's, a, it's a good word. I, I, I th this feeling of, of um, uh, I don't know, uh, the belonging in the space, or be, being protected somehow in the, within the space, and, and that's. I think, I mean, if you think of the compactness or the, 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 the ideas of other floors, you know, the, the um, round plan, it's like uh, working three-dimensionally, trying to uh, uh, put spaces in a very, very clever way and how they are also are connected in, the, in terms of vertical and movement through the spaces is something I find very intriguing. So it's like, um, yeah. But it's, it's like, you know, um, I, I, I just found some, some themes that I, I like to explore in different ways. I'm, a, I'm probably just working on the same project all the time, but so it might be a bit boring to look at. You know? but <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a, I don't know, it's, it's fascination and feeling that you get for certain situations, I think, that, that I, I like very much the picture of my... My boy is eight. He's sitting in the window there. It, it's a it's a it's a it's a beautiful and sad picture at the same time because it's a child. A child should be with other children or should be with someone. He's sitting there, but at the same time, I think it's it's a it's a I love the picture because he's uh, he always goes there when he comes to the house, and he stays there whether he's whatever he's doing. It's his place, you know. So. Uh, he loves to be just there and, and, and he's very protected the, uh, in this space but he's also at the same time he has the whole landscape takes in the whole landscape as you saw and that, that's, a, that's quite an interesting situation that of course has to do with being in a, 
I mean, it's very different from from an urban t or a dense situation, of course, but up here it's, it's like that. It's probably very Scandinavian, this. I guess it's really like you see a lot of. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Just about the relations with music. I think it's really, really um, wonderful to have this, this seeing an image and then hearing this thing, and then it definitely has an impact one on the other. And I was wondering if that relationship comes into your process of work as well. I mean, well, when you're should. sketching, does, it, does, does music have a part oh. in that? Well, mm. I might listen to the. I, I don't often listen to exactly this music when I'm working, but but if I if I was, I'd probably make much better work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it, it is also for me because I'm not used to. I mean, we've done this a few times before, but in different settings and things. But it's. Um, I think it's very. Sometimes we get this kind of uh, collisions or overlap situations where. Where I also feel that, even though I've s I know all the drawings and that, I, I still feel that something they start really start to talk and, yeah. and, and communicate in a very very interesting way. Definitely. So I think, um, uh, I guess, uh, we should we should try that much more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it gets a bit expensive to have him come <laughs> to the office all the time. No? <laughs> <laughs> What is it like here at the moment? Is it is it very much um, computers, or is it very much uh, is it there is an interest? I heard there was a course uh, who works with the you know the handmade and the hand the crafted. Yep. Is that wh wh what you attend or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, um, it was very, very nice to come in, and I'm uh, very happy. So, oh, how do you do this? Uh, huh? Thank you very much.